Hello, everybody. Happy belated New Year. It is, well, by the time you see this episode, it will be February of 2024. Um, just, I'm just so excited to be here. I was expecting a guest today, um, but that doesn't look like that's going to happen. So I'll have to contact them to possibly reschedule. Um, I am going to talk a lot about a whole bevy of subjects today, uh, because again, I was expecting to have a guest, but before I get started, hit that subscribe button, hit it, smash it, obliterate it, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I'm up to 157. I think I can possibly get up to 200. I'm like 43 away from 200, I think. Yep, 200. So I'm 43 away from 200. I know I can do it. I need your help. So if you're not a subscriber, um, just hit that subscribe button. Remember to share this video and comment. The more comments that I get, the more likely that YouTube is um, going to suggest me in that algorithm. Yeah, algorithm. So that will improve those stats. Um, so just comment, please comment. I, I would greatly appreciate it. And as of January 1st, 2024, we're back on Patreon. So the link will be in the description section. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of things, which I will talk about at the end. Um, or I might make a separate video. Like I said, I was expecting a guest and I had questions for the guest today not expecting to do a video solo. So just um, be patient. Just be patient. So the first thing I want to talk about um, is, well, I want to welcome everyone to um, election season. We are upon um, uh, election. This time is for the big office of President of the United States. Um, there have been a couple of primaries. Um, I'll talk about the Republican side first. No, duh, Donald Trump is running away with it. Um, the fact that he's not in prison, like, how is he able to even run? Like, why did the DOJ wait basically two years to charge him with everything? You knew what he was doing and you just said, okay, we'll just wait until he announces. And now he's a mark. So people, like, I've literally heard people say, you know, they're just picking on them. They're trying to attack him. So I'm going to support him. If, if DOJ had did its job, he wouldn't even be able to run because he would be in prison. So, the, like, miss me with the, if you vote third party, you're voting for Trump. You could have gotten rid of this problem, DOJ, by doing your job. Simply doing your job. Do your job. Um, and now, even if you do convict it, well, I'll get to that part later. So Trump literally ran away with Iowa. I mean, it wasn't even close. Um, Trump finished first, DeSantis finished second, Nikki Haley finished third, um, Vivek Ramaswamy dropped out, thank goodness, oh my gosh, that snake needs to be out, ook, 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 he has the Ben Shapiro, I talk too fast disease, um, I don't know why he talks so fast, it's like, like, dude, like, where, where are you? Like, why are you talking so fast? Like, it's not a race. You could slow, you know, slow it down a little bit so I can understand the lies that you're going to tell me. Slow down. But Ramaswamy dropped out and endorsed Trump. And I am going to talk about how Tim Scott made a complete fool of himself uh, because he also dropped out. He, I think he dropped out before Iowa. Um, 
I'm almost certain of it. I know Ramaswamy dropped out after Iowa when he came in fourth place. So I know he dropped out after Iowa. But I think Tim Scott dropped out before Iowa. Um, and like I said, it was Trump first. DeSantis, who dropped out second. Nick Haley still in the race. I don't know why. A third, Ramaswamy fourth. And then in New Hampshire, um, New Hampshire is a whole different thing because usually um, I always thought New Hampshire had their primaries first. But for, yeah, they do. They have their primaries first. Iowa has a caucus. New Hampshire has a primary thing. Um, I don't know how, I don't know how either of them work. So I might have to do some research on that. Because for some reason, well, we'll get to that later. But um, Trump came in first. And by this time, like, it's just a two-person race on the Democratic side. It's just basically Trump and Haley, right? It's just them two now. Even though for some reason, Chris Christie was getting votes. And I'm like, um, how do you vote for somebody that's dropped out of the race? Like, by this time, like, Chris Christie was out of the race weeks ago, and you still went to vote for him. Like, I get you don't want to vote for Trump, but, like, did you not vote for Haley because she's female? Because she's actually in the race, right? It's her and Trump. So you, if you're a Republican, we can't really vote for third parties in primaries because there's not enough third party um support to render a primary like that but like you saw the two choices but you said and eh, can't vote because it was it because she's female was it because like those are the two choices that you have um and then on the democrat side they skip iowa i think I'm pretty sure they skipped Iowa. I was like fourth in the Democratic primary. So they will come later. But New Hampshire is interesting. I'll tell you why. So um, the DNC decided to make South Carolina first. Like they have any chance of winning South Carolina in the, in the general. But they decided, okay, we're going to make South Carolina first. They never, I never heard where they were going to put New Hampshire. But the New Hampshire Democratic Party said, no, we're going to go first. It's in our Constitution. We've always gone first. We're not going to change anything. So the Democratic said, the Democratic Party said, we won't counter delegates. We won't award delegates to whomever wins. Um, whoever wins, and I forget how they do it like they don't use like winner take all they assign delegates based off of the amount of votes you get so we won't reward them because you're you're violating the agreement of the dnc well new hampshire said no we're gonna go ahead and have it in the meantime the biden campaign and went back track. so biden's name was not, is not was not on the ballot it was only Dean Phillips, Marianne, Marianne Williamson, and I don't think Jane Fugger made it because, after all, he's a nat not a natural-born citizen. He can't run. Give it up. You can't run. It's in the Constitution. Deal with it. So anyway, it was those two. Somehow, they said that, well, if you just write in Joe Biden's name, just write his name in. We'll count those votes. I don't know how um, the Biden camp, I don't know how Biden won New Hampshire. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me the way they treated New Hampshire. And then people said, okay, basically the DNC told New Hampshire they didn't matter. Their vote's gonna, not going to count. So 
you turn around and vote for the party that says that your votes aren't going to count. That doesn't make sense. Well, not vote for the party. You vote for the candidate who says, uh, we're, um, you don't count. And don't, I don't, what I don't want to hear also is I don't want to hear somebody say, oh, well, Joe Biden's not over the DNC. They're separate. Give me a freaking break. Joe Biden is the head of the DNC, period, point blank. Um, you can't tell me any different. It's always been like that when Obama was president, he was head of the DNC, just like Trump is the head of the DRNC. Just stop. They may be token heads, but they are literally who. Uh, I can't deal with people who make try to make the arguments like, oh, no, they're separate. No, they're the same. So back to my point of I, I don't understand why people in New Hampshire would go. Like, they literally say, like, literally say yeah, you don't matter. We're not going to count your delegates. I know what I'll do. I live in New Hampshire. I'll just write in Joe Biden's name. For what reason? I don't understand it at all. I don't live in New Hampshire. I don't know anybody that lives in New Hampshire, but I would really like to talk to somebody who wrote Joe Biden's name in and ask him why. It doesn't make sense to me. Like you're gonna see a party that claims they they wanna save democracy. They're not being Democrat in their own primary and you still go to vote for the Come on, stop it. Like, you got to stop this. Stop this. It's so irrational. It doesn't even make sense to me. Um, just doesn't make sense. Dean Phillips did very well. Um, he got around 20, about 20% 20 of the vote. And I thought that was just about, you know, actually I thought Dean Phillips was going to win New Hampshire. Because I didn't, what I didn't take into account is people would be silly enough to write in Joe Biden's name when he said that their primaries didn't matter, the roles wouldn't count, but they're the people in New Hampshire, they can vote any way they want. Um, like I said, Dean Phillips did very well. He got about 20%. But Mary Ann, oh my goodness, I think she got like 5,000 votes. Girl, get out. It's time to bow out. You're not, you're not. And she was polling ahead of Dean Phillips. I thought she would get way more than 5,000 votes. I thought for sure. And now I'm going to look this up because I want to make sure I'm not giving that like wrong information. <clears throat> Pardon me. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I got a little tickle on my throat because um I don't want to give out any wrong. Okay, so and I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking. New, yeah, New Hampshire primary. So I'll just do it from Republican side and then I'll do it from the Democrat side. So like I said, Donald Trump ran away. Well, actually, if I'm looking at this, he really did run away with it. Donald Trump got 54.3% or 176,000 votes. Nikki Haley got 43.2, 140,000 votes around there. Ron DeSantis got 2,000 200 votes and Chris Christie got 1400. Um, and I'm going to type in Democrats. Democrats. Okay, so this is where it gets. I, I was right. Okay. So um Joe Biden was the right in, got 
63.9%. I'm still wondering how you get that much with as a right in. That's just disgusting to me. Again, how y'all going to vote for me? Never mind. Okay, so Dean Phillips, I was right. He got 19.6 votes. And Marianne Williams says she got around 5,000 at 4%. Somebody named Derek Nadu um, got 1,600. I've never heard of these other people, to be honest. Um, So I, I wonder, you know, um, what's going on. But in terms of the Democrats, let's see. Who is next? Um, I know Parsons may sever. I'm really trying to see who's next. Um, I know there won't be a primary in Florida for the Democrats or North Carolina. I think those are the two states so far that are canceling their primaries, or they'll just have Joe Biden's name on it. I, I'm to the point that I don't understand voters anymore. I'm, I'm tired. I just, I'm sitting here scratching my head. And while some people on the third party are saying, you know, it proves that you can win as a right in you can win as a right in but here's the thing why joe biden won so big as a right in candidate in new hampshire people know who he is most people know who the president of the united states is he can appear on tv anytime he wants be interviewed by any journalist anytime he wants if he says i'm holding an evening press conference, our programming is going to be interrupted. So he has that going for him. He has the money from dark money, money from corporate PACs. He has all of that where the traditional third party candidate does not have that. They don't have the money. They don't have the notoriety. Hardly anybody knows who they are. So it's not quite the same. Um, so I get where people are saying, oh, well, take no, he won as a write-in. Yeah, he can because everybody knows who he is. He's the current president of the United States. So it's not going to be hard for people to know, oh, who's the president? Joe Biden. Wait a minute, let me backtrack. For all you Trumpers out there, Joe Biden is the president. So let's just get that right. If election wasn't stolen, Nobody went out and stole the election. Joe Biden actually won. But for him to win, like, so big is what I think is really disturbing me because what what is it going to take for people to wake up and realize nothing is going to change in terms of our policy until we change the way that we vote? Like, we're going to keep getting the same thing no matter whether it's Trump or Biden or RFK Jr. that wins. The war in Gaza won't stop. There won't be a two-state solution. There won't be a ceasefire. Ukraine is going to get more money for its war. We're probably going to go to war with China. It's just, it's, I, I don't understand votes. I literally don't. Because people I talk to, they'll come, you know, they'll raise their concerns, um, about the state of the country and they're saying some legitimate things but when you ask them how they're voting and they're going to say well i got to vote for the lesser two evils or who's going to win so i'm going to vote for biden well if you follow that logic about voting for who's going to win you probably should be voting for trump because he's leading in all the polls i don't know a poll where biden is leading by any measure or any, I literally don't know those, um, any of those polls that show him coming anywhere close to beating Trump. He's losing in Michigan. He's losing in Georgia. He has high unfavorability rates. And basically, you know, um, 
I, I wish I knew how to communicate better to tell people, hey, you don't have to vote for my candidate because I already know who I'm voting for. But at least be willing to to hold the demo pubs responsible or accountable for your vote. In other words, if you're going to vote for them and time after time, um, like the Republicans will say, we're going to make abortion illegal in federally. No, you won't. We're going to um, do something about the border crisis. We're going to close the country. No, you won't because you don't have anything to campaign on. If you made abortion illegal federally, one, there's going to be a Supreme Court fight and it'll be up to the state. And you close the board. You have nothing to fundraise off of anymore. Same with Democrats. Democrats have been promising for years they're going to codify uh, abortion. Obama promised it, had a 60 senator advantage, and then decide, you know what, it's, it's not a priority at this time. After promising that he would codify it. If we get, and you hear this one, this was my favorite one. I heard this out of the vice president, Kamala Harris. Well, if we get 57 senators, we could do something. No, you can't. You need 60 because you have to, you have this thing called the filibuster, which isn't even in the constitution um, that you have to have to pass most bills. Now, yes, you can suspend the filibuster to pass a bill, but the chances of Republicans even voting to suspend it on something that they don't want is like unlikely. So you don't need 57 senators. You need 60, 61, 62. You need something that starts with a six. I'm not going to give you seven, but I'm convinced if you had a hundred, you would still find some excuse not to do anything. I mean, what the, the $15 minimum wage was the parliamentarian's fault. Um, um, the immigration is the Republicans' fault. Um, it, it's like they both play the same game. And I wish that's what I could tell people better. I wish I was a better communicator where I could say, look, this is what they're doing to you. They're using issues want to distract us from what's really going on. The fact that we can't make it off of what we're making in terms of our jobs. The fact that minimum wage has been $7.25 for at least 10 years. But they use these issues like immigration, abortion, CRT, and both sides do it. Um, and I'm not saying, well, minus CRT, I'm not saying abortion isn't an important issue. It is. I'm not saying the immigration is not an important issue. It is. But what I'm saying is they use the other side in blaming why they can't get their agenda done, even though the Republicans under Trump, his first two years, they had the House, they had the Senate, they had the White House. Did they pass any legislation outlawing abortion? No, because they don't want to. Again, I've already made my point with the Democrats, so I won't make that point again. But, and, and, and did they pass anything about immigration? No, they literally passed no law to strengthen um, immigration. They had children in cages. Um, well, Trump did. Um, they banned Muslims from coming in partially. But they didn't pass anything because they used issues to, they, they blame the other side for them not being able to do anything, even though they have the numbers to do anything that they want. Democrats, exactly the same. We want a $15 minimum wage. We want, no, they don't want reparations. We want um, voters' rights. That's the one. That's the one I want to talk about because when, the Democratic Party refusal to suspend, to even advocate for suspending the filibuster, not to get voters' rights passed, 
is a sickening thing. You mean to tell me that, and I'm talking about specifically Black people because that's who the voters' rights bill would address. You mean to tell me you can't suspend the filibuster to pass voters' rights to make sure, to make sure that my rights to vote are strengthened. You come up with every excuse. And let's just say the Republicans say, no, we're not going, we're not going to talk about it. Okay, then you start calling them by name. You say, this senator voted against voters' rights for Black people, this one, this one, this one, this one. Do they do that? No. Instead, they say, if we suspend the filibuster, it'll cause chaos. Really? That tells me you don't want voters' rights for Black people. And yet, you depend on Black people to win elections. And yet, you're angry because support in the Black community has decreased. You haven't done anything for us, but you're angry that we're not going to vote for you. That doesn't make sense to me. Make it make, it make sense. Make it make sense to me. It does not. And I think that's what made me so done with the Democratic Party. Because the Republican Party, they're so busy fighting amongst each other. It's like, okay, it'll be just like 10 seconds. They're probably going to be gone. I mean, they're just like either they're super Trump or they're anti-Trump. And they're always fighting against each other. So I always put my focus, I put my focus on the Democrats because that's where the black vote tends to go. If black people voted Republican, my criticism would be towards the Republican Party. And since very few black people vote independent, I can't focus on the independent party because over 90% of black people vote for the Democrats. So that's why I always focus on the Democrats and the fact that, well, they're um, they're just depending on it. And while I hear the, you know, no vote, you know, no reparations, no vote, no $20 minimum wage, no vote. I say vote. I don't ever want anybody is not to vote because I think that's, I think that's reckless. I don't, I don't think either party wants people to vote. I think they would just be happy if like 10 people showed up and they'd be like, great, this is great. Um, yada, yada, yada. Because if people who like, if non-voters just started rising up and saying, you know what, I do have power over this. I'm going to show up and vote. If we had like a 90% of our eligible voters showing up, that would obliterate the two party system because you can't imagine I can't imagine any scenario where non-voters would be voting Republican or Democrat. I don't see it. Um, and why I think non-voters correctly point out that how pathetic our government is not voting. It wanted to, it gives you right not to complain. Don't say anything because you had a chance to do something and you didn't. Um, it also um, makes it makes you responsible, really, not responsible for like high crime or you know, those things. But when you are re when you go to the polls, you're you have a responsibility to say this is who I want to represent me, and that responsibility shouldn't be taken lightly. And when you just walk away from it, you're walking away from your responsibility. I believe this. I believe that people are responsible for voting. I think it's the very minimal thing, but you also have to know who you're voting for. You have to. You have to set the standard about who you want to vote for. Now, while I would never tell people how to vote or who to vote for, I can tell you what I'm not going to vote for, right? I can tell you I won't vote for anybody that's not for Medicare for all. It's just not going to happen. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you talk about. If you're not for Medicare for all, we don't have any more. We don't have anything else to talk about. We don't have anything to talk about if you're not for reparations, if you're not for $25 minimum wage, if you're not for um, um, Green New Deal. I, we, 
we have nothing to talk about. We have nothing to talk about if you take corporate PAC money or dark money. We have nothing to talk about. If you're flying around always raising money, when do you have time to actually do your job? Um, I, I, I don't understand. I understand, um, but it doesn't make sense to me, right? It doesn't make sense to me that you're always sending out letters for fundraisers, sending out letters for fundraisers. You get a salary when you go to Congress. Live off of that. You're supposed to be a servant, a public servant. That's what you signed up for. Instead, you're raising millions and millions of dollars, which could go to a, a shelter, which could go to a domestic violence um, education, which could go to a bevy of anything. Literally, the last presidential election, it got up to a billion dollars. A billion dollars? Are you kidding me? Do you know how many hospitals, do you know how many people could be fit? Do you know how many houses could be built? For a billion dollars. This is why I'm for public financing of elections. It would stop all of this foolishness, right? You wouldn't have to be spending your time raising money. You just live off the salary that Congress gives you because you can't, you get free health care. So it's not like you got to get anything taken out of your money for health care. Just live off that $174,000 a year. Like struggle like the rest of us because your job is a public servant not to get rich but to actually serve your community and i'm talking about congress i'm not talking about city councils and all those things although the same message could apply but their salaries are much less now, live off of that don't tell me that we should get rid of citizens united and you never propose a law you never say any type of um, you never propose any type of legislation that says, okay, we won't have public, we won't, we will have publicly financed elections. I haven't heard any Democrat propose that. And if they have, please correct me, please correct me in the comment section, because, um, that, that's, that would be something that would amaze me because I haven't heard it. Um, but I hear candidates. Joe Biden, that will say, we need to get rid of Citizens United. Really? And you're accepting dark money? And you're taking corporate um, a PAC money? You could do just like Bernie did and not take corporate PAC money. I hope you do know that, right? You do know you don't have to take dark money. You could just take like small donor contributions. Bernie did it. ALC did it. Not that I agree with 100% of their policies because I think in some fashions they're sellouts, but essentially that's what they did. But this is the thing. Both parties will say one thing, do the opposite, but here comes my criticism again. We'll go vote for them. We have to stop this. We have to start voting third party and get these people out. Um, and if, if I say nothing else, nothing else, that's what I want to say. So there's that rant, everybody, and I'm done. So I said that I was going to talk about the things that are going to happen in the channel in this video, but I'm most likely going to do it in another video. And I'll probably tape that tomorrow. But like I said, by the time you all see this, it's going to be February, um, which is Black History Month. Remember, Black History is not just in February. It's from January 1st to December 31st. Um, remember um, to um, like this pay video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel, comment, and support me on Patreon. Um, we're going to be bringing back our after parties on Thursday nights and only the Patreon will receive, um, a link to that. So just be on the lookout for that. And again, thank you. I hope I made some kind of sense because again, 
I was expecting to have a guest and the guest for some reason isn't here, but I'll worry about that on my own. Um, remember that the Tracy show comes on two times per week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7.30 p.m. And again, remember to subscribe, support me on Patreon, comment, like, and share. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Goodbye.